Hello everyone. Today let's learn what are the trigonometric ratios of allied angles. So friends for any given angle theta we know what are the six trigonometric ratios of theta. Now using this same value of theta I can form many other angles like minus theta. I can add or subtract 90 to theta. I can also do the same with 180. 270 and 360 so did you see that these are all multiples of 90 which i am either adding or subtracting to theta now these angles that are formed their trigonometric ratios are found to be very very similar to the trigonometric ratios of theta so these angles are known as allied angles what are they known as allied angles now the word allied means something which has the similar nature or behavior so the trigonometric ratios of these angles are very similar to that of theta that's why they are known as allied angles and friends the concept is very easy to understand let's see how to find these trigonometric ratios now these angles lie across all the four quadrants so let's quickly draw the four quadrants so friends here are the four quadrants and we have already seen in a previous video which ratios are positive in all these quadrants so here all the trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant in the second quadrant it will be sin and cosec which are positive in the third quadrant tan and cot will be positive and cos and sec will be positive in the fourth quadrant let's also name the angles friends so this will be 0 degrees 90 this will be 180 270 and once we complete the full circle we will come back to 360 degrees over here so did you notice that 0 180 and 360 they are all lying on the x axis and they are all even multiples of 90 whereas 90 and 270 see these friends these are odd multiples of 90 and they are lying on the y axis okay so we'll keep that in mind because it will be useful later now let's start with the first allied angle which is minus theta see friends this one minus theta so how do we measure minus theta see when we measure theta from the positive side of the x axis that is over here in the clockwise direction that is this way friends when we measure it in the clockwise direction then theta becomes negative so in which quadrant will theta lie yes it will go like this so theta will become negative see the direction of the arrow friends theta is negative over here it's gone into the fourth quadrant now while finding the trigonometric ratios of allied angles you just need to determine two important things what are they one is the sine and the other is the trigonometric ratio okay once you decide these two then the job is done okay so for the allied angle minus theta let's see what will be the sign now because minus theta lies in the fourth quadrant you know that only cos and sec are going to be positive so all trigonometric ratios except cos and sec will be negative so that way we have decided the sign so let's take an example over here suppose i have tan of minus 45 degrees and i want to find out what is its value so because it's minus 45 it will lie in the fourth quadrant so what is positive here only cos and sec whereas this is tan so this will be a negative value so tan will be negative so the sign is decided friends now to decide the trigonometric ratio let's see how we are measuring this theta now we are measuring theta from the 0 degree c over here which is on the x axis and friends always remember x axis means it will never change this trigonometric ratio so just keep in mind friends that the x axis never changes the trigonometric ratio and 0 degree lies on the x axis so this tan will remain tan and you will just copy theta as it is friends 45 degrees that's it so tan of minus 45 is nothing but minus tan 45 so that way you can find all the trigonometric ratios of minus 45 okay now in which quadrant will 90 minus theta lie see 90 minus theta will be less than 90 so it will lie in the first quadrant where all the trigonometric ratios are going to be positive now suppose we want to find cos of 30 degrees okay now we know that this can be written as cos of 90 minus 60 degrees 
Now 90 minus 60 means it will lie in the first quadrant. So all the ratios are positive. So this will also be positive. Now let's see what will be the trigonometric ratio. Now because this is 90, 90 lies on the y-axis friends. See 90 and 270. They are odd multiples of 90. Now because they lie on the y-axis, y-axis always changes the trigonometric ratio. So remember this x-axis never changes the trigonometric ratio. y-axis always changes the trigonometric ratio. So to which trigonometric ratio does it change into? For that you just need to remember one small table friends. Sine will change into cos and vice versa. Tan will change into cot and cot will change into tan. Sec will change into cosec and cosec will change into sec. So just remember this small table over here. So here I have cos. Now because it is 90, it will lie on the y-axis which will change this ratio. So it will change cos to what will it change it to? Sine. So this will become sine and I will write the theta which is 60 degrees. So see friends, cos 30 is plus sine 60 degrees. So any angle of the type 90 minus theta, you can easily find it using this way. Now let's quickly go to 90 plus theta. Now 90 plus theta is also very very similar to this but only thing is it will lie in the second quadrant. Now in the second quadrant only sine and cosec will be positive. So let's take an example here. Suppose I have tan of 150 degrees. Yes. I can write it as tan of, can you guess? Yeah, 90 plus 60 degrees, right? So this will lie in the second quadrant, but this is tan friends. And only sine and cosec are going to be positive. So what will be the sine of this? It will become negative. See, I have decided the sine this way. Now, 90 is over here. 90 lies on the y-axis. So my trigonometric ratio will definitely change into Yes, it will change it into cot. So it will become cot 60 degrees. So this is how 90 plus theta has to be handled. Now let's come to 180 minus theta. Now again, if you see 180 minus theta will lie in the second quadrant only. So shall we take an example over here? So let's take cos of 120 degrees. I can always write this as 180 minus 60. Yes. Now because it's lying in the second quadrant, Cos will be negative friends. Remember the second quadrant rule. So it will be negative. But this is 180. 180 lies on the x-axis and x-axis will never change the trigonometric ratio. So cos will remain cos and you will write the theta which is 60 degrees. So cos of 120 is minus cos 60 degrees. Now let's go to 180 plus theta friends. Okay. Now the example we can take is cosec of 225 degrees. Now, cosec of 225 degrees can be written as cosec of 180 plus 45. So, see 180 plus theta, it will go into the third quadrant. It's more than 180, where only tan and cot are going to be positive, whereas this is cosec. So, the sign will become negative, okay? And this is 180, so this is lies on the x-axis. So, the trigonometric ratio is not going to change. It will remain cosec. And 45, I will write it like this. So this is how 180 plus theta will behave. Now let's see 270 minus theta. Let's take an example. Suppose I have sec of 240 degrees. Now this I can write it as 270 minus 30 degrees. Yes. Now 270 minus 30 means it will lie again in the third quadrant where tan and cot are positive. But I have sec over here. So it will be a negative value. And this is 270 which lies on the y-axis. So can you guess? The y-axis will always change the trigonometric ratio. So sec will become cosec. So this will become cosec of 30 degrees. That's it friends. If you remember the rules, this is extremely easy. Okay, now let's see 270 plus theta. Here is our example, sine of 330 degrees. So I can write it as 270 plus 60 degrees. This has now entered into the fourth quadrant where only cos and sec are positive. And I am having sine over here. So definitely it's going to be a negative value. And this is 270 
it's the y-axis we are talking about. Y-axis will definitely change the trigonometric ratio. So sine will become cos. So let me write cos over here and the my theta is 60 degrees. So this will be the answer. So this was 270 plus theta. Now let's take 360 minus theta, okay? So here my example is cos of 315 degrees, friends. So 315, I can write it as 360 minus 45. Now this will definitely lie in the fourth quadrant where cos and sec are going to be positive and I have cos over here. So definitely the sign is going to be positive. Now because this is 360 friends, it lies on the x-axis and x-axis will never change the trigonometric ratio. So cos will remain cos and I will write theta as it is. So cos 315 is cos 45 degrees. And friends, in this way, you can find the trigonometric ratios of even bigger allied angles. So as a question, you can try to find out what will be the value of cos of 390 degrees. So try it out and do let me know in the comment section. And if you found this video useful, please do like and share the video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below and do consider subscribing to enjoy math. So till we meet again in the next video, take care.